This is the third part of the Apollonian Spider series. This time we discuss a few ways to draw curves. The curve drawn by the Apollonian Spider is embedded into this discussion. So let's dive right into the creation of curves. At this point it seems useful to recall a few mathematical tools that can be used to describe curves. One tool is familiar to all of you. Every mathematical function gives rise to a curve. As an example, a simple parabola is drawn. For every value of x, you can calculate the corresponding y value when you evaluate the function at x. The resulting point with coordinates x and y is part of the curve and any continuous function yields a connected curve. However, there is an obvious limitation to this family of curves. Even a simple circle is excluded, since it would require a multivalued function. There is a simple extension to parametric curves. Now each coordinate direction is described by its own function that depends on a curve parameter, here denoted by t. For each value of t, two coordinate values x and y of the corresponding points are calculated by simple function evaluations. When the two functions are continuous, all these points form a curve. With this method, it is even straightforward to construct curves that conquer the third dimension. It just requires one more function for the z-coordinate of the curve. In the early stages of learning a computer language, one usually engages in so-called turtle graphics. In general, a turtle is provided with simple walking and turning instructions which results in a curve that is traced by the turtle at the beach. In this video, the turtle has kindly agreed to be replaced by our spider, and the trace in the sand is replaced by the spider's web. These simple seven moves and turns can be considered as a pattern block. We replace the walking distance by a variable. Now the block can be used as an abbreviation to create patterns with different sizes. This abbreviation allows for a neat trick. We simply repeat the seven steps, but the walking instruction is now replaced with a pattern block that uses one third of the original length. Now the curve shows a substructure and the original pattern reappears at a smaller scale. If this process is repeated over and over again, we end up with a fractal, the famous von Koch curve. In the upper right corner, you can find a link to one of my older videos, where this fractal curve is used to construct a snowflake. Finally, there is yet another way of drawing curves. This time the spider just receives a list of coordinates and walks from one point to the next. It is obvious that the shape of the curve strongly depends on the order of the points. When they are shuffled, a completely different curve is obtained. How is the web of the Apollonian spider constructed? What are your expectations? Do you think that there is a closed mathematical expression that just needs to be evaluated? Do you think there is a repeating pattern that gets redrawn at smaller and smaller scales? Or will it just be a list of points that are connected by lines? Although it maybe looks like the least sophisticated way of creating curves, when the spider is just moving from point to point, it is actually the method that lies underneath the web constructed by our Apollonian spider. The mathematical challenge lies in the design of an algorithm that provides these points in the correct order and with the required level of accuracy to create the web of circles as a continuous curve. As it is hinted at in the first video of this series, the points for the walking instruction are generated by two complex Möbius transformations. Additionally, Similar to the von Koch curve, one can specify the level of detail one wants to display on the screen. These curves show the output of the algorithm for different levels of detail. The parameter epsilon is the largest distance two neighboring points can have. If you remember the group tree and the disks from the first video, it basically means that all disks must be smaller than a given size. Therefore, in some parts of the tree, one has to dive to much deeper levels to achieve the required accuracy. One can also see that for large values of epsilon, the spider takes shortcuts and parts of the gasket will be skipped. 
In the next part, we will have a closer look at Möbius transformations and how they can be understood geometrically. I hope to see you again. Bye for now.